the last time we got to work talking about Redux. So I will be talking about Redux today. Uh, Mikhail spoiled it a bit uh, with his talk, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so uh, before actually, you know, explaining what Redux is and why we need to use that, I think uh, it's it's worth looking at the problem because I was not understanding it when I was first looking at it. So I think that you know some of the it, this is like a, you know mock up of a you know simple chat application, and then you have like two different uh, you know. Uh, widgets if you if you call them widgets like you know one of them is like the count of underneath messages and another one is like the um, a window which displays the messages so in here you actually have two different views on the same data so you have like you know messages coming into your uh, application but now you need to display the underneath messages count on the top and then you need to display the messages on one of the widgets so first when you see this you i thought two things two solutions that came to my mind so one of them is like actually one solution which comes from the other uh, you know uh, diagnosis so we need to basically you know uh, communicate between two widgets here uh, so at this time, I was I when I looked at this problem, I was using Drondel mainly, and I looked at Aurelio, and so that's why I call them widgets uh, basically. So and then the solution that I was thinking was like you know well we can do pops up on the you know uh, client side, and then so you can just whenever you get the message, you can just subscribe it, and then two parts of the application can listen on the same thing, and then update this thing. So. But uh, I then try to, you know, uh, understand that how people are, you, you know, solving this problem. And then I came to like, you know, the flux architecture and Redux things and all that, you know, poisonous stuff uh, I learned about. And then uh, I have been spending, you know, my time on those. So this is the actual problem that, you know, basically, you know, uh, makes it easy for you to, you know, use a state management library. And the Redux, Redux is one of them. It's a state management library which, you know, adopts the Flux architecture, but it takes like some cues from uh, Elm uh, design as well. So it's like, you know, very, if you like functional programming, I think you will like, uh, like the, you know, way that Redux does its thing. Uh, so there's actually, so I was actually, you know, struggling to prepare this talk <coughs> because it's so simple that you are going to ask me the question, why do I need to use this? I can just rewrite the same thing over and over again. It's actually that, but uh, there is a, f a few reasons that why you may want to use this one. So it's actually, you know, very simple, very small uh, library. Do you have like, you know, the meat of it is like in three things. You have actions, you have reducers, and then you have a store. Uh, so what action is, what actions are is that it is a way that you describe your updates. So you basically you know describe what hap what needs to happen to your state. You basically describe them through actions, and then dispatch them. And the reducers are taking those actions and then apply the update to the state. And then you have the store, and stores is like a you know single source of truth. So you you have one store for your whole application. And then your state is there, and every action comes to your store, and then every uh, store basically dispatches those actions to the you know proper reducers, and then your uh, state gets updated, and the store gets the new state, and then uh, does the jobs from there. So this is a very simple example of uh, you know how you uh, do use Redux uh, in actual code. So you have your reducer here. Reducers uh, is like, you know, it's a pure function. You get a state and then you get an action. And based on that, you shouldn't mutate the state. You should just return the new state that you are actually, you know, uh, getting into after that action. And then you create a store. And then after that, what you can do is you can use the store to dispatch actions. And then you can also listen on them, uh, subscribe to that store, and then display that, you know, state somewhere else. And it's also, Redux is also very good with libraries like, you know, React, Angular, uh, or the others. So, for example, this is a very, you know, simple usage of the same uh, thing on the 
uh, uh, with React with a React component. So this is like a you know a component that you can just take and then uh, put it somewhere else. So it does some heavy lifting here, which is like this, this is the manual way of doing it, and then it's not a best thing for your performance as well. Uh, you see that on the component did mount, I'm subscribing to store to listen on the changes, and then based on that change, I update the state of the component. So I just do like heavy lifting here uh, and do all sorts of stuff. But actually, there is a much better way of doing it, which is more performant as well. Like you can use like Redux, React Redux library, and then it provides you a, a higher order function called connect. And then with that, what you can do is you can just use that and then you get to, you need to apply, you need to basically pass two uh, functions to it to map the state to the, your props and then map the dispatch uh, to the props again. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating three props. One of them is count, the other one is on increment, the other one is on decrement. And then inside my component, I don't know nothing about uh, Redux. I just use my props to do those stuff. So you can also advertise through the prop types uh, inside the counter component what your prop types are. Uh, which, when you look at this, I don't do anything, any sort of like uh, management of well, if this gets updated, I need to do this, do that, do that kind of stuff. You don't need to deal with the observables and anything. You just use that thing, and it read it feels like it is re-rendering every time. But React does some clever stuff behind the scenes, I guess. So actually, when you look at it, there is, you know, uh, there is a, you know, whole idea is about your, you have one state for the whole entire application, one state tree, and then uh, that state tree is your source of truth. That's all. I mean, this makes it so much easier to reason from your application. And then you, the other idea is that you never, you never uh, mutate your state. So your state is like, uh, you just do your operation and then return a new thing from the reducer without actually mutating the state. And this makes it so much easier uh, when you actually deal with like debugging stuff and everything else. But at the end of the day, why, why should we use Redux or why not Flux or Mobix or Marty or insert your favorite uh, state management library there? Uh, I think, you know, uh, there are a few reasons. Actually, you know, to me, there are a few reasons. So, as every clever developer, I go to uh, you know GitHub repository and look at the star count. If it is above five thousand, that's good. I can you know think about this. Uh, but if it is like you know above you know <coughs> twenty thousand, you shouldn't actually think about that. You just use the thing. Uh, so that's <laughs> what we did in SQL Colony. <laughs> so the other thing I looked at is like go Stack Overflow, look at the questions, and like, you know it, what, uh, there are questions asked there. You can say that, well, people are asking questions because it's confusing. Could be true, I don't know. But I uh, took that as a, you know, uh, good thing. Uh, the other thing was, you know, the one of the most important things is that Redux is, has a amazing resources on the library, uh, on its uh, documentation. So you can actually, you know, read all of that. And then it's, uh, at the end of the day, when you read it, it makes sense. Uh, so it, it also has a rich ecosystem uh, behind it. I mean, there are lots of like, you know, people are uh, putting uh, some, you know, enhancers and middle layers to, you know, uh, enrich the ecosystem. So which makes it a bit more easier for you when you are developing your application. And then again, an, an, another thing that we are using is like Redux form. We were so skeptical about it first, but now, you know, after using it, you just it, it just makes life uh, so much easier and then you just have benefits on the all other stuff and it is actually when you are developing it you just you know it just boosts your happiness i think so one of them is like we this came up yesterday so we were talking uh, talking in our team that someone else was not seeing something happening but i was just looking at it oh, okay yeah, look at the data on the right hand side with a redux locker you get that and then it should have this thing on the left hand side because the data suggests that i should have that so it was like it, it was making life so much easier we were not actually saying that reasoning about trying to debug the thing it was already there so it should all it should have that same thing and the other thing is that you shouldn't mutate the state as i mentioned before but uh you know, we are humans, we can do that. Uh, you can write tests to, 
you know, understand that you are not mutating the state. But the other thing is that, you know, you can just put this on your development uh, environment. And then whenever you use this uh, library, it just on the console, it just tells you whenever you actually mutate the state so that you see, uh, you know, in which uh, for which action you are, you know, basically mutating the state. The other thing is that this is like, you know, kind of mind blowing. You can just do unru undo and redo kind of stuff without actually having too much uh, trouble. And again, you know, as you, as you use the thing, you just get more impressed about, you know, how much stuff that you are going to get for free without actually writing uh, the actual code. So there are some resources I think they are worth looking into. So one of them is like, this is a free course that you can just go and watch from the creator of the Redux, Dan Abramov. Uh, it's a very good, uh, you know, uh, screencast. And then this is a bit more uh, in-depth version of the thing, which is using with uh, React and the building an actual application with it and then with the Redux. And then there are this, some more resources that you can go and have a look at it. Uh, hope it was useful. Any questions? And what does Redux form do? Uh, Redux form is basically uh, hooking into Redux and then managing your form by, you know, storing the state of the form in Redux store. So it's it, like an HTML form. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, so you basically hook up your, you know, input fields and then the, all of those controls uh, to Redux form and Redux form stores that state inside the uh, Redux store. So you, you get like, you know, you can do like validation and everything. Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah in one question. place. And when you return the new view mark on the reducer, yeah. right? um, does that mean that you don't have to, you can update the state with just one little bit of the view model and the rest stays intact? Yeah. Do you, can you do the similar thing from, is it, are you just returning a part of the view model? Yeah. So reducer is being consumed by the internals of the uh, Redux. So whenever that is consumed, your state is changed. And then whenever your state is changed, your component is basically updating. And then you are calling that map props to uh, map state to props function. And then at that point, you have the new state. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually do any anything else uh, to do that. You know, re uh, I need to update the reacting. So it does that uh, for you. Okay. So Cool, okay, cool. Any, anything else? Uh, cool, thank you.